welcome to come home. Some days you just need the whole pot of coffee. And if you can't find a cup, like is my experience right now, you just grab the whole pot of coffee. Just don't burn yourself, okay? Don't try this at home, especially if it's hot. Uh, I'm Jen Mallon, welcome to Come Home. We have to laugh, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. And today we're gonna be talking about the Word of God and it's very clear in the Word of God that the Word of God is called sweet, it's called honey, we're to eat it. Uh, we can do without uh, bread, but we cannot do without the bread of life, without Jesus and the Word of God. So today, uh, we have back a very special guest, Dr. Brian Simmons, and he is the lead translator of the Passion Translation. And it is an incredible uh, translation of the Bible. Uh, the, the love that oozes from it is powerful. In fact, I, I can read other versions of the Bible longer than I can the Passion Translation because when I read the TPT, I break down crying and the Holy Spirit comes and there's a little revival and an awakening and an outpouring and I go through a whole plethora of emotions and it's amazing and I love every minute of it. So just warning, it'll take you a little bit longer to get through it. But today we are going to sit with him, ask him how he got the revelation, hear about uh, some scriptures that have been so meaningful and meaty and key as he's been on this journey. And the journey's not over. He is still on, um, he is still being the scribe of heaven for this beautiful piece of work that our father has entrusted him to do. And he doesn't do it alone. He does it with his beautiful, precious, intercessory prayer wife, Candace. They've served God for over 40 years in ministry. They've been married for 51 years. They have three amazing children, seven gr grandchildren, and four greats. Okay, I got that all out. Uh, so anyway, just a man of legacy and honor and faith, and you are going to just be awakened in a whole new way. So let's go to this quick promo, and then we'll be back with Dr. Brian. Want more Come Home? Keep the conversation going online by connecting with us on social media. Hear more from Jen, learn more about our guests, and connect with other viewers on Facebook and Instagram. Follow at Jen Mellon to find out more. Well, today is a special day. We are going to meet with uh, Dr. Brian Simmons and we're gonna get up close and personal and hear how God chose him to write uh, and to endeavor in this great project, experience, journey, which is the Passion Translation. And I'm sure that the Lord knew he could trust him because of his vast resume of spiritual experience and all the things he said yes to. You know, the word is clear that when we're faithful in the little, he makes us ruler over much. And so it's really no surprise that the Lord said, hey, you too, Dr. Brian, Dr. Candace, I have something new for you. Now, let me tell you before he comes on camera, the, the, the kind of guy he is. Today, his apartment complex, our condo association was repaving or doing something, and so he couldn't get his car out. And so what does he do? He could have canceled, he could have called for a ride. No, he Ubered to the studio. That's the kind of guy he is, which means I'm doing it, I'm going for it, no excuses. Dr. Brian, thank you for Ubering. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Jen. Thank you for your life's work. And thank you for the just multitudes that it's transformed and touched and just given a new lens and yeah. depth. It's into. exciting to hear all the testimonies, people falling in love with the Bible. Some of yeah. them had given up Bible reading and then came across the Passion Translation. It just reinvigorated their passion for the Bible. We've had, uh, I think we're on number four, suicidal people that were spared from suicide because of reading the Passion wow. Translation. Uh, some of them drove hours to meet me and tell me that mm. personally. I was so taken back, but yeah. it's amazing. It's humbling. Uh, I love 
my job. I love what I'm doing. I get to read the Bible and study it six hours a day and just get lost in it. Wow. I can imagine being a fly on the wall at your house every time you get a fresh revelation oh screaming from your den and your <laughs> wife's probably going, what? What now? What? What? What'd you get now? What? What? She's so used to it. She's she heard just... it so many times. And you're right, though. Nearly every day, many times a week, I find things that, that I didn't realize and sometimes maybe others as well. But it's exciting. The Bible's so rich. It's the Word of God. It's so pure. It's the sweetest honey, sweeter than honeycomb. It, it's the joy and delight of my heart. So, yeah, what can go wrong studying the Bible? Well, you not only love it, but you have invited other people into your uh, love relationship with it, and you have imparted that love yeah. to others, which that's really what we're supposed to be doing, you know, just duplicating right. like like Jesus did, like God did, like Jesus did. And you have a great coach, the Holy Spirit. Oh, my. I think most Christians have grown up in a guilt-driven theological box. If I could be so bold to say that, I sure don't mean to be offensive in any way, but uh, we're so prone to be moved by guilt and shame yeah. rather than our spirit being like a sail in the wind, yeah. catching a breeze of heaven and going where He leads us. We gravitate, to, you know, it's like a car out of alignment. We gravitate to the ditch of condemnation, guilt, shame, you're not good enough, fear, fear, inferiority, yeah. insecurity, all of those things where the scriptures give us confidence, not in ourselves. You know, it's not a self-confidence. It's God plus nothing. And we realize God is with us and he's going to be enough no matter what. Yeah. So uh, I love doing the Passion Translation and I'm trying my best to bring uh, articulation yeah. to the heart of God. You know, his word is meant for the heart, not just the intellect. The door to truth is the heart, not the mind. Right. And when we understand that, that the intellect is not sufficient to handle revelation from God, only the spirit that was created by God can receive revelation from him. So I, I love it. it. It stirs me. It humbles me. The more I study, the less I know. <laughs> And that, that's the greatest place to be because yeah. the less you know, the hungrier you are and the more reliant and dependent you are on him. And then he, and then when we get our flesh out of the way, then he can download yeah. quicker. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, there's no emojis in the Bible. No. When we text each other, <laughs> we, you know, I text my wife, I'm going to put a rose or the shaking heart or something there, Yeah. you know. If I text a friend, I like the little guy with the halo. I, I, I put that on there, the guy with the sunglasses. But we don't have emojis in the Bible. Right. And the reason why we put emojis in our text is because we don't want, we want our heart to come across. We want somebody to know our heart, not, not just our words. Right. God is the same way. He wants us to know his heart. And if we have a lens of I'm not good enough, I'm, you know, I'm insufficient, I'm no good, I'm guilty, I'm full of shame. If that's the lens, then we're going to hear that from right. Scripture, where I see the commandments of God as prophecies. Yeah. If God commands you in the New Testament, it's a prophecy that He will do it in you. Wow. If He expects you to do it, He will fulfill it in you. That's why His commandments are not grievous or burdensome, because commandments, even commandments, are prophecies. Wow. Light and easy. Oh my! But but the, it is the enemy mm -hmm. has worked overtime trying to get us to see commandments as laws and legalism right. and rules and a taskmaster and whipping us back in. And to what if get we in. fail? Right. You know the law. Do this. Uh, you know the law is do. You yeah. know you got to do this. But grace is it's done. It's finished. I've yeah. done it for you. Let me live my life for you. The only one that can live the Christian life is Christ. Yeah. Christ in us, not I, but Christ. And when he lives his life through us, we become a vessel. We become an aquarium, so to speak. We become a dispenser of the divine. Then he can flow through us and mingled with our heart, with our spirit, our personality, God can flow through us and touch people. Whew. He's given you such a gift to just mm -hmm. communicate his heart and not, not just with words, but the presence mm. of his precious spirit behind your words. And words are life-giving and they bring, they bring revelation and 
I believe this generation is so hungry. Mature Christians, they're weary. Yeah. You know, they're disillusioned. Church right. has not been the, the end all for them. Uh, new believers don't know what to do. And we so need this translation because of the love and not right. sloppy love. I love this because it's not sloppy agape uh -huh. or just grace. You can do whatever. No. Uh, it, you teach us responsibility, but through a, a loving father. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we live in an imperfect world and that bothers us to have imperfection around <laughs> us. But perfect love is our center. We do have perfection in an imperfect world yeah. and it's perfect love. There's nothing in our life that's perfect except the love of God. Yeah. So for, for the people who are quick to point out flaws, we have a perfect savior. Yeah. His love is perfect and God will never point out your inconsistencies, your flaws, and define you by that. He'll only define you by who you're going to be forever in his presence. He sees you as the radiant bride long before you do, and he treats you that way. People will always treat us by our weakness. They'll see our weaknesses, and that's how they define us. But God never does that. You don't have a history. You only have a destiny. Wow. Your history ended with three nails <laughs> 2,000 years ago. So there, he doesn't like draw up your past and remind you of that. That's the accuser of the brothers that yeah. does that, the sisters. We have a savior that silences that gavel has fallen, not guilty. There is therefore now no condemnation. Uh -huh. So the lovers of God have a highway of light and a highway of love. And that's gotta be the path we walk on. As we relate to one another, yeah. we value, esteem each other. And as we relate to God, we honor him. Love is the greatest commandment, right? Yeah. It's the fulfilling of the law. So the one thing we're told to do more than anything else is to love God. Yeah. That's our heart. That's our passion. It was designed. To love. It not was designed. Not study the Bible. Right. The greatest commandment is not read the Bible. The greatest commandment love. is love God. The Lord your God, yeah. Well, so every time we open the word, that should be our 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 agenda, our purpose is, is mm. let me behold your love. Show right. me how to love you more yeah. or how to receive your love or expect your love or look for your love or, or, or give your love. Even Moses, the lawgiver, uh, he said, show me your glory. And he'd been in the glory already at least three times. <laughs> he'd already been 120 days in the glory. Yeah. And he says, show me more. Mm. And God says, okay. It's my goodness. Mm. And the Lord is compassionate and loving. Even in the Old Testament, Yahweh is revealed as the God of Racham. Racham is the Hebrew word mercy, Oof. the merciful God. But Racham also is the word for womb, mm. the womb. So there's a womb love is what I call mercy. Mercy in the Hebrew is the love a mother has for the child she carries that is not her, but it's not separate either. There's yeah. a, a love, a womb love yeah. that gives birth to the child. And mercy is the greatest, <laughs> it is the sum total of all of God's attributes, is his merciful. He is merciful as far as the heavens are above the earth. That's how great and merciful he is for us. So, you know, mercy triumphs over judgment. Yes, it does. And we need God's mercy. Yeah, we and need it for each other, our spouses, our families, yeah. our community and our churches. We yeah. need mercy. We do. And you know, when you get mercy, you can extend mercy. Yeah. Especially as you grow older. The older I get, the more I see I need to, I need to sow mercy because I realize more and more how yeah. much I need a harvest of mercy. <laughs> so it becomes easier to sow it. Yeah. So the love theology is really what drives us with the Passion Project. Thankfully, I have a team of theologians that work with me. I'm the lead translator, but not the sole translator. Yeah. I do have others that help and, and bring nuances and flavor and correction and insights and all kinds of things to help me. So I'm blessed. How fun to be in that war room. I bet oh, that is gosh. just like... Going back and forth as scholars, you know, we have a Fulbright scholar who contributed to the to the Bowers Greek uh, lexicon. I mean, he's one of the most brilliant. Uh, he knows more languages than I can count. Wow. And he reads Hebrew and Greek with no help. 
just wow. right off the manuscript. And he is uh, not just a consultant. He is helping me with uh, the Old Testament, and it's fantastic. So God's just favored you. He has brought me the right people. Proof of his love for you, that if Mercy. I've given you this inc <laughs> yeah. incredibly daunting task, I'm going to bring in people. Uh, that, he promised me he would help me when he gave me this calling. He promised, I will help you. And he has. How did, how did you get called? I read about it in 2009. You had yes. an undeniable encounter oh, where did. he commissioned you. Yeah. Tell us about it. Jen, I'd pastored, my wife and I pastored for 18 years, wonderful church in Connecticut, New England, and, and it was time to step aside, let a younger crew take it. Yeah. And so I was asking God, what do you have for me? What's the next step in our journey? You've never failed us, Lord. What do you have for this man? What, sh what should this man do? Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't have a dream or uh, I had a glorious visitation <laughs> and I was given this task to do the translation project. And I was given a number of promises. He promised me I would be persecuted. He <gasps> promised me that he would help me. He promised he would give me an unveil truths. And I'll use the word secret, but carefully that he'd give me secrets of the Hebrew language. Yeah. And you know, the secrets of the Lord, you know, the secret things belong to God. Yeah. He unveils light in dark places. So there's nothing wrong with using that word properly. The secrets of the Lord. Uh, is with those who fear him. Yeah. So he's helped me and it's been a 14 year journey to date. And uh, it's fascinating. Uh, it's, uh, you know, people ask me, are, are you qualified to do this? I said, who is? <laughs> who is? Uh, don't we believe that the one who calls us qualifies us? Yeah. And uh, God's call is why I'm doing this. It's an act of obedience. It's for him. If nobody likes it, it's okay. Yes. I still love you. Uh, I want to please him. Yeah. And it's my calling to do so. Well, your yes to your calling is changing the, the face of uh, Christianity and Bible readers. Take a second, just for those that have never really done a deep dive, what's the difference between a paraphrase, a translation? Yeah. Well, uh, in my view... Yes. Uh, paraphrase and translation. A paraphrase is a little more of a dynamic equivalent. It is a translation that brings a flavor to it that is the nuance, you know, that's hidden there or uh, embedded within the Hebrew or Greek text, and it's brought to explicit understanding. Uh, so it is, you know, we, we need expanded translations. We need, that's why we have the Amplified. Right. That's why we have so many beautiful translations throughout church history. There's actually 2,000 English translations. We've had one translation of the Bible a year since, the, since records have been formed. Wow. So there's actually a website of encyclopedia of translations. Wow. Uh, so we, we're going to have many more in yeah. years to come. And I think our use of Aramaic is going to be a bridge to help scholars step into the understanding of the language of Jesus. And he's given me insight of the word homonym and the Hebrew homonyms. Hebrew is a homonymic language. Linguists use that term to describe a language that has not very large vocabulary, but one word can mean a lot of things. Right. And Hebrew, uh, that's simplification, but Hebrew yeah. is a homonymic language. Greek and English, is we're not. We have homonyms in English like bank, yes. where we put money or bank the side of a river. Right. You know, and they have no correlation. They have no relationship at all. But in Hebrew, the three-letter triliteral root system of Hebrew, every word in Hebrew comes from a three-letter root, Father, Son, and Spirit. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> God speaks in threes, you know, he loves the third day. Yeah. And those, the three letter roots of Hebrew have offshoots of meaning yeah. that can like kiss, let him kiss me, song of songs. Yeah. The word kiss, nashak, it also means to take up weapons and to go to battle, to prepare, Ooh. to equip yourself, which I think is what Paul is speaking of in Ephesians where he talks about the equipping of the saints. I think you could almost say the kissing of yeah. the saints in the Hebrew language because it means the same thing. Wow. So Hebrew words have multiple meanings, like yeah. kala, kala, the last word Jesus spoke was bride. bride. <laughs> you taught me that, you just taught that to me. And it means finished, yeah. but it can also mean bride. 
well, Jesus is coming back to finish this whole thing yeah. with getting his bride. And to go for a word for word translation, that's a noble, noble desire. I'm not going to denigrate that, but it's impossible. Yeah, I agree. You're going to cut off meaning. We're not to add to the scriptures, but why doesn't anybody say we're not to take away from the scripture? Right. It's equally important that we not detract or subtract yeah. from the scripture. And I, I believe that there are some translations that have subtracted some of the meaning from the text. So well, they have. They've taken out the blood and they've taken out controversial yeah. or what they consider to be controversial, uh, intolerant words. They just pulled them out. One of the most egregious translation errors is Junia. <laughs> In the uh, book of Romans, chapter 16, she's named as an apostle, but for hundreds of years, scribes changed that woman's name to a male uh, junio to make a male version of that instead of, a, uh, it's junia is the female, yeah. a junius, I'm sorry, is the male, but they never found a junius and there never was a junius. It's junia and it's a woman who was an apostle mentioned in Romans 16. So bias has stepped into translations and uh, it, it's a fact of life. Yeah, which is why the Holy Spirit is our ultimate teacher, yes. but it's also why there's different paraphrases and translations that you immerse yourself in. Yeah. And your spirit bears witness with what you're reading and you feel the peace of God. Yeah, the best translation is the one you believe in, the one you live. Yes, I heard you read. say that last night. <laughs> that's the best translation. Yeah, and, it, and it's fine if people don't like the Passion Translation. That's not, not our goal. But believe whatever translation you're reading. Believe it. Embrace it. Walk it out. Live it out in faith. And watch God change your life. That's, that's what's important. It is. And I, I love your humility in saying that, that you're not saying, mine's the one. No. This is the one that has the anointing on it. No. no, you're saying whichever one that you're receiving from and living, that you believe it enough to apply it and walk it out and see the fruit, stick with that one. So right? true. Okay, so we don't have a lot of time, but I want to do one more uh, question because we did talk about yesterday about the Song of Songs, and we didn't get to... Uh, your banner over me is love. Oh, yeah. That's in chapter 2. And the Shulamite, the word Shulamite and Solomon come from the same Hebrew root word. Those three-letter root words, Shulamite, Solomon, Shlomo, same root. One masculine, one feminine. So we're one with Jesus Christ. The Shulamite, let her disappear and you take her place. I will take her place. And Solomon, there's one greater than Solomon. His name's Jesus. Yes. He's the bridegroom. So he brings us from the apple tree. She's feasting on the Lord's fruit in her life. And he takes her, he transports her into what many translations call the banqueting table. Yeah. But the word banquet is not in there and the word table is not in there. It's a mistranslated verse. He doesn't take you to the banqueting table. It's the house of wine. Ah. Must have had some uh, translators that weren't, easy with translating right. that. But he brings us to the house of wine. It's the wine of the Holy Spirit. Oh. It's the engagement party for the bride. Yeah. It's the intoxicating love of God. The ancient fathers, church fathers said, you don't know the love of God until it has intoxicated your soul. Oh. The intoxicating love of God, exhilarating. It, it moves us out of the natural into the spiritual. So he brings us to the house of wine and his banner, there's two words in Hebrew for banner. One is a military banner. The other is a tribal banner. Interestingly, it's the tribal banner. His tribal banner over me is love. love. Agape. We're the love tribe. You know, we're the 13th <laughs> tribe, I guess. The, we are under that banner of love, not a banner of you're not good enough, try harder, someday I'll like you. But his banner over me is love. His banner over you today, my friend, is the love of God. That's the theme of your life. It's the flag that flies over your heart day after day. His banner over me is love. Wow. We have like three minutes left. Can you just take a minute and just 
take people to the house of wine. Oh. Just take them there, yes. however way you want to take them yeah. there. <laughs> Friends, I'm, I'm just so blessed to come into your home or wherever you're watching this and, and bring you into this revelation of the, the house of wine where his banner over us is love. You know, it begins by feasting on Jesus Christ. He is our love feast, the cup of bliss that we drink. He is the food of our soul and to feast upon him. That brings us into the place of divine intoxication where we're overwhelmed, overcome by Holy Spirit. Espiritu Santo, I love saying his name in Spanish. Espiritu Santo, the Holy Spirit. He is the one that brings us into the glorious realm of intimacy. You don't have to push the door open. You don't even have to knock on it. It's already open. The portal of heaven is a tender heart to God. Mm. And as you step into that trysting place of love, where you know that he's there with you to meet with you, to, to mingle with you, to share his heart, his emotions, his passions. You know, Jesus, the man, Christ Jesus, he has a bride and he can't wait to come and take her to himself. John 14, uh, I'm going away, but I will come and take you to myself, he says. He's going to bring us like he did Enoch into that divine union of being one with God. You're the bride of Christ. You're his chosen lover. You're more than a friend. You're the lookalike partner that he died for. See yourself that way. And you'll step into that house of, of the wine of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch Thank the you, heart Jesus. of each one today. Hallelujah. Mm. Woo. Ah. God, we're just so grateful for your mercy. We're so grateful for intimacy. We're so you, grateful Lord. for the deeper things of God. We're so grateful for the more. We're so grateful for the house of wine. We're so grateful that you've said, uh, it is finished. You're, I'm coming for you, bride. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. And listen, I just pray you feel God's touch, his presence, his love. Uh, I pray that you will explore, you'll go deeper. If you feel led, go look up the Passion Translation. You can get it on all kinds of online versions. You can also get a physical one. I encourage you to Get some of Dr. Brian Simmons' materials. The I Hear His Whisper is an incredible devotional. And there, there's so much. The Sacred Journey, uh, Throne Room Prayers, many others and more to come. He's going to be a regular guest with us, I think, because we're all just touched. I'm Jen Allen. Come home. We'll see you next time.